There's that lovely face. There she is. It's uh, it's Ronnie Bennett. Uh, no relation anymore. <laughs> well, I, that depends on what you call a relation, you know? It, yeah. Former husband is a relationship of some kind. Of you know? some kind, yeah. Either it can be good or it can be bad. In this case, it's turned out to be pretty damn good. Yes. Uh, How are you? I, I'm fine. And this is what she affectionately refers to as the Ronnie and Alex show. Yes. What else? You yes. know? No, it's the Alex and Ronnie show. I went uh, alphabetical with our names. Oh, oh did you really? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. All right. <laughs> Running the show as you used to. I see. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, of course. what's new in your life out there? It's been pretty sad. Um, my cat, Ollie, uh, who is nearly 14, has been sick for several months, and he was down to just skin and bones, and so I had to put, I don't like to say it that way, but, you know, I hate the word euthanasia, too, but did that on Saturday, and I'm still missing him, of course. Um, I, but I discovered, because my vet was unavailable, that day that there's an organization here called compassionate oh compassionate what companions or something like that anyway there it's a group of veterinarians and all they do is make house calls to you know uh, <laughs> when the time comes send the pet off to pet heaven yeah and uh, a woman came and did that on Saturday it was terribly sad and you know, the same thing that's happened to me with people and other pets has been happening is you just, you think you see them out of the corner of your eye going yeah, by yeah. You know, for a while. And then you look and no, 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 no. Or maybe it isn't just a ghost, who knows. But, um, the, but it, it's, yeah. it's, we were almost 14 years together and we were good friends and we argued all the time about how things should be done in the house. And sometimes I won and sometimes he did. Um, and he was... He was just gorgeous, and he was wonderful. We, was we should add friend. that he was an exotic animal, in a way. Uh, oh, well, he was a hybrid. He was one-sixth African serval. Yeah. And that's called a savanna cat. And he was beautiful. He was, I mean, I, I was, he was lovely. Oh. I mean, he stayed with me on a couple of occasions. You know, I tried to find that. It's somewhere on my computer, and I couldn't find it. But that wonderful photo when I was away, and he was at your house years ago, sitting on the sofa with a can of beer next to him watching <laughs> television with you. <laughs> it was pretty what funny. Can, why would there be a can of beer? Because I don't drink beer. Well, maybe it was a can, it was a can of soda. A can I don't of soda. remember. I Had couldn't to be a find can the photo. Of soda. <laughs> it was pretty funny with his legs spread out in front of him. Yeah, he, if I could track down the photo, eventually I'll publish it on the blog. <laughs> he was huge. I mean, yes. he was, the, yes. the savannas are so big that their owners usually walk them around the neighborhood on a leash. Well, that's not the reason. Um, I mean, first of all, they're medium-sized cats. I mean, yeah. if you can tell on the screen, they're, you know, if a house cat is like this size, they're bigger. Yeah. But they're medium-sized, servals are medium-sized cats. When I still lived in New York on my block mm -hmm. or down the street a ways, a couple had a brother and sister servals, and they did walk them, but they were what's called F1s. They were 50% wild, and they were much more like their wild cats, and they also like water a lot, um, but mine didn't. He was one-sixth serval, and he couldn't have cared less. I mean, well, not only couldn't care less, the idea of a harness was not something that was ever going to be accomplished with him. Yeah. So um, he didn't, he was more like a house cat. Um, he was a good guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the problems with hybrids, and I would never have one again, is that I'm not so sure I like the idea at all. But um, is veterinarians, they haven't been around long enough for veterinarians to know about them. That You know, different breeds have different kinds of things right. that they have prob medical problems with. And they don't know enough about uh, savanna cats to be sure about whatever they're doing or what they think they should do or what the animal might have wrong with them. So they're not a good idea on several levels. <clears throat> but uh, but he was a good guy and he was so beautiful. He <laughs> was, he so was beautiful. a beautiful cat and, and he you would have him stay with me and he never would have anything to do with me for, the mo right. for most of the time when you were gone, unless I started working at the computer, in which case he would then like grab my legs 
while I was trying to type and do stuff. And then as soon oh, as I... Oh, I'd forgotten. You told me that a long time ago. And as soon ago, as I'd I would pay that. attention to him, he was back to, an, uh, you know, avoiding me. Right. You know. Uh, he got better in his old age about people. In the, uh, Back then, he just didn't like people who weren't me, whether I took them somewhere or, um, or you came to my house. But he got better in the last few years of his life. He, at least he would let you pet him once or twice. I and mean, what he, he was a biter, you know, and... I mean, on things like if I didn't serve breakfast or dinner fast enough, he'd bite my ankle. My, the whole time he was with me, my ankles were in shreds. Um, <laughs> and and you'd pet him, and he seemed to be perfectly happy. He's purring away, and you pet him, and then all of a sudden he turns and whack! He's got you. He's bit your hand. What? Why would? Why do they do things like well, that? Well, <laughs> anyway, he, he with me, he would like avoid me, but he had a sixth sense of when you were coming back. All right. (laughs) And so I could count on it that about a day before you got back, he would suddenly take a shine to me. He would start (laughs) being nice to me. And it's what? So you wouldn't tell terrible stories to me? And and as soon as you got back, you know, off he went. And then the next time you'd leave him with me, same story. It could be a week. It could be two weeks. It could be three days on day Two, he would suddenly warm up to me. Do you have a pet? No. Uh, I, 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 there are a couple of reasons why I haven't had a pet. Um, one reason I haven't had a pet is that, uh, in, especially in this apartment, uh, my wife likes to leave the windows open. Oh, wow. Well, and how high up are you? Eight <laughs> floors. Okay. <laughs> and so I just, I, I would love to have a cat. And I would keep the windows closed. We do babysit a cat every now and then named uh, Berta, who's one of the smartest cats I've ever met in my life. We've fallen absolutely in love with her. And uh, Berta, when she comes, I do have screens for the windows. So I put the screens in. And are they tight enough so that they can't yeah, they're be pushed t- out? Yeah, they're, they're, they're tight enough. But yeah. still, if she stands on, say, the radiator, which looks out over the window, I'm kind of frightened, you know. I, I, my, wife <laughs> I know do, my, my wife doesn't feel that way, but I do, you know. And I, I know that the cat probably won't jump out the window, but I do know the cat will probably try to walk out on the ledge. Yes, yes. <laughs> and and uh, you know, there's a guy that comes about every couple of years. We hire a guy to come and clean our windows, and he gets out on the ledge with a belt. Oh, uh, yeah, I can't watch uh, those I, I have to leave the house. I can't be yeah. here when that goes on. So if the cat even gets close to the window and it's it's got a screen in it, I'm going, get away from there. Get away from there, you know. And, yeah. of course, th- th- that's lost on a cat because now they really want to go by the window. Of course they do. They know from the tone of your and voice. He, and she likes to sit out on the radiator and look out the window uh, because there's a lot happening down there. Yes. She doesn't know what exactly, but things are moving, you know. Yes, yes. So uh, anyway, so but uh, that's one reason I haven't had a cat. The only other reason <laughs> I haven't had a cat uh, is because at my age, I don't want anything sitting there looking at me saying, you know, I'm probably going to be here when you're not. <laughs> you know, I put some thought to that because I've always had cats. Yeah. We had cats when we were married, and I've had them ever since, usually one at a time. Um, we had I'm another one of the great, we had another one of the greatest cats in the world, Shabbos. Yes, we did. Shabbos <laughs> was the greatest cat I've ever had. Um, but and I've I've thought about this even before Ollie got sick that if he predeceased me, um, would I get another cat? Well, first of all. You know, in the same way that I didn't go out and get a brand new husband after you and I broke up, it takes a while. <laughs> um, it, it's the same thing. I mean, when your animal, your pet dies, you don't run out and get a new one. There has to be, he's still with me to a sense. It's not time. But I've thought about it, and I think that if I ever do it again, um, I'm going to go to one of those places where you can, you can adopt an old cat. And we can spend our old age together because most people want kittens and they won't take old cats. And, right. You know, and if, if, if a cat doesn't have a home, an old cat doesn't have a home anymore because uh, his people died or, you know, awful. Some people just put a cat out and think they can take care of themselves. Um, it would be nice to give an old cat a good home for his final, his or her final I time. I think that's maybe a nice idea. 
but we'll see. It's and, gonna and, be fun. And I could do that myself and probably feel good about it and even leave the windows open so if the cat commits suicide, <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> No, you can't leave the windows open. <laughs> I love the old story that Truman Capote told about he was at uh, he was going on a date with a woman. At least that's what he says. And and uh, he, so the woman says, "I've got to still get ready." So she went into the her room and was w working on getting herself ready. And all of a sudden, he looks at his feet. And there's this little dog, and he's got a ball, and he wants him to throw the ball. So oh, no. he picks up the ball and he throws it. And uh, the ball then bounces around the room and the dog chases around the room and then catches the ball and brings it back and drops it at his feet. He throws the ball again. And again, the ball bounces around the room and the dog bounces around the room and grabs the ball and drops it at his feet. He then grabs the ball, throws it, it goes out an open window and the dog goes right after it. Oh, what happened? So this was on like the Jack Parr show, and Parr said, well, what did you do? He said, well, she came out from getting ready. I didn't say a word. We went to dinner, and then at dinner I mentioned, have you noticed your dog being visibly depressed lately? Oh, stop. <laughs> That's not funny. He told the story on The Tonight Show. Oh, God. Unrelated to pets. I ran across a Truman Capote quote somewhere in the last couple of days who said that said that life was is a pretty good play with a very bad third act. <laughs> <laughs> I miss Truman Capote. <laughs> yes, we all miss Truman Capote. Uh, how will he but he's been gone forever. Jeez, you know. He died relatively young, I think in his 50s. Really? Yeah, I'd have yeah. to look it up, but I'm Here, pretty sure. But here's the 50s. thing about losing a pet. You know, people have said, and there have been people who have said, that, that the two hardest things is to lose a parent and to lose a pet. Not a spouse? Well, a spouse, too. But, the, you know, they were talking, I guess, about people who are still okay. But, yeah, but that, that losing a pet is right up there with grief. Yeah. yeah, it is. You know, there's that, I've forgotten the name of it, but there's a well-known psychological kind of inquiry. It's a list of of things that can go wrong in life, you know, that commonly go wrong in life with people, mm -hmm. and or right, even. And each is assigned a relative number of how much it affects you, good or bad, or, or um, stresses you. And that whether it's good stuff like getting married or getting a new job, but also losing a spouse, a pet, all those kind of, it's a long list. It's 20 or 25 lists. Someone looking at this will undoubtedly know the name of the list. I can't remember. But um, but certainly losing a pet is on the list. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it. it, it to me, when I lost uh, Shabbos, uh, who was mm, our, our good cat. Good old Shabbos. Well, it was, he was our cat. You know, yes. he was the one we got, and um, uh, I I grieved. I really grieved. You know, because here's the thing about about a, about a pet like Shabbos, he had spent 18 years with me. He was here for every major event in my life for 18 years. He yeah. saw me when I was happy. He saw me when I was sad. He saw me. He saw met all my girlfriends. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he had literally lived his life with me, and when he died, I said to myself, I can't believe that in 18 years, we never talked to each other verbally. But you understood each other. But yet, I feel he talked to me constantly. Yes, you yes. Know? And, and, and that's the amazing thing. There's a nonverbal relationship you have with a pet that after it's through, you go, I can't believe I never talked to him. <clears throat> You know, yeah, because I we, understand. We I never thought had that thought before, but I get it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And um, Shabbos was very Zen and very special. I mean, I remember he was he was a super cool cat. I mean, I remember once having to take him across Fourteenth Street in my arms. And oh you my would God! You would think a cat would go crazy. He was just really cool about the whole thing. He didn't budge. He just, hey, that's really nice traffic, huh? Oh, that's, that's cool. That's interesting. You know, it was funny before you and I broke up. 
um, by that even that time he wasn't anywhere near 18 mm -hmm. he still was sleeping most of the time mm -hmm. and by then we had a lady Siamese cat that we named well, Yanta, who way, was really uh, uh, a busy let me finish yeah. this then you can go yeah and she was really a busybody and by then even though he wasn't all that old yet mostly he slept on the back of a certain chair in the living room and Yadav, who always had things to do, would come trotting through the room, clearly on her way to do something. But she would always detour when he was sleeping there, always. She would detour past that chair, jump up, whack him in the head, and yeah. then go on about whatever yes. she was yeah. doing. Yeah. She would do that when another cat would come into the house, like maybe we were cat sitting or something, and a cat would come into the house. She would go crazy, you know, because of, uh, yikes, another cat in the house. And what would she do? She wouldn't attack the cat that came in the house. She would go to Shabbos and beat the crap oh, out of him. Oh, poor Shabbos. <laughs> whap, whap, whap. I know. I have to say. And she was about half his size. She, she still... was. She, uh, if, if Shabbos was the best cat I ever owned, she was the worst. <laughs> and then there was poor dumb Bert who used to stare at the corners. In the yeah, yeah, we had a cat called Bert who stared at the corner. We had five cats total. Then there was one I had, I had, I think while we were still together, called Mouse. Yeah, Mouse was part of the same litter as Bert, and Mouse never got any bigger yeah. than a kitten. No, um, Mouse wasn't the same litter as the Bert. As Bert, she was, I think, the daughter of either Bert or Charlie, who was the other cat we owned. We owned so many cats, folks. No, there were only five. But there she, were only five. She, she, um, she, there were two one things. Of the, there, there, were, there were two things about. Uh, mouse that were terrific. <clears throat> Number one, she was the one that would pee in the toilet. She taught herself to pee in the toilet. I don't remember that. Okay, that's You were cool. gone by then. But I was asleep one night with somebody there with me, I don't know who, and I hear something going on in the bathroom, some peeing going on. I'm going, we don't have a guest or anything. I go into the, <laughs> I go in the bathroom, there's, there's, there's nothing there. So I'm going, I'm thinking, about, I'm I'm dreaming about something. Next night, same thing. I go in there, nothing, nobody there, but there are two little wet paw prints on ah. the toilet seat. And the third <laughs> night that it happened, I went in and I watched. Oh, I know, I was married to Susan at the time. And she used yeah. to sit there and watch Susan peeing with great intent. And so the night, that one oh, night. Oh, so she's figuring out what was going on. Yeah, I can do that too. <laughs> one night I went in there and she's in there, she's peeing on the toilet. And I'm, and she always, for the rest of her life, peed on the toilet, which was wonderful. And people went, well, does she also poop in the toilet? And I said, you can't expect everything. Oh, see, I had a cat. My cat before, um, before Ollie, uh, I trained to use the toilet. And he did that for three years until I guess he just didn't like balancing on it anymore. And we had a few accidents, so I gave up, gave in and gave him a litter box. But, and he was happier. But for three years, he, I, you know, I trained him. There's, <laughs> you're gonna love this. There is a thing I bought that goes under the toilet seat. That's yeah. like a little for little kids, you know, with babies. You need them, would teach them to use it. But this one was for training cats to use the toilet. And the name of the product was. Are you ready for this? Kitty Whiz Transfer System. <laughs> Kitty <laughs> Whiz Transfer forgot. System. Do you remember the jazz musician Charlie Mingus? Sure. He actually wrote a book on how to train your cat to, to shit in the toilet. Oh, did he? Yes, he did. <laughs> he did. There, there's a method where you don't have to buy this kit, you know. But don't you love the name of it? Kitty Whiz oh, Transfer absolutely. System. But, um, <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, however, Shabbos was a very uh, zen and, and very wise, but he was also very stupid. And I'll, I'll, the re you may remember this. He used to always shit in the bathtub. Yes, I do. I do. And, Every and for day of the, my life, for, I remember that For the that 18 back years that he shit in the bathtub, every time he did it, he tried to dig it under. Yeah, well. Never yeah. being able to get even make a dent in the porcelain. But let me tell you a story about how smart he could be. When we lived in Riverdale, I was sitting on the sofa one night watching TV, and he liked to sleep on the top of the TV. They were bigger TVs in those days. Yeah. And he'd sleep on the top because it was warm. I'm sitting there perfectly happy watching some show, and all of a sudden, 
Shabbos falls off onto the floor and he doesn't move. And I go, oh my God. I go running up. And I, Should I touch him? Has he broken a bone? What's going on? He stood up and he walked off. And then he turned around and looked at me and flicked his tail <laughs> as if to say, screw you, yeah. and walked off. Okay. Funny. So he's got a sense of humor. A week or two or some amount of time goes by. I'm again watching television. He again has got himself laid out on the top of the television set. Watching. Cats love the top of television sets. Yes. Well, it's warm. Yeah. And so, and again, he fell off and didn't move. And I didn't move. I said, you're not going to get me this time. You can just get up and get out of here on your own. You're not going to do this to me. But he didn't move. And he didn't move. And he didn't move. So finally, I got up. Maybe this time he hurt himself. He got up, walked off flicked his tail at me again and went off to have a snack or something. So he's not entirely stupid. Yeah, no, 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 no. But uh, he, uh, he, was, he, was, he was Zen. He was, my, he was my Zen master. You know, he taught me what it was like to be terribly cool, you know, <laughs> right. and, and never let anything phase you, except there were a couple of things that would phase Shabbos, and I, I think you remember this. Uh, you could take a rubber band and twang it, and he would start having a gag reflex. Oh, that I hadn't and, and then about and that then one day, one, You're right. one day I you that. one day you were using an emery board on your nails, and the same gag reflex. So anytime we wanted him to start acting like he was gagging, we simply took <laughs> we took an emery board and scratched it, or a rubber band, and went twang, twang, twang. Why that brought out a gag reflex in this cat <laughs> is totally beyond me. You know, any two other people or any groups of other people would also have tons of stories like this, but different ones from their cats. Cats are weird. Yeah. They're just weird. Cats? Cats? I love cats. Yeah, I, me too. And, and I love cats over dogs, oddly enough. I mean, I don't mind dogs, but, you know, you got to take them out and you got to collect their poop. Cats poop somewhere. You can put a you box know, down and they'll poop. I think I like dogs equally, especially medium-sized to big dogs, not those little teeny teacup dogs. But, um, but I never wanted one. Although I don't want one now, but certainly any other time. Those forty years I lived in New York, because you can never do anything. I can't tell you how many times at work somebody said, "Oh, let's go have a drink," and there would always be three or four say, "Sorry, can't do it. Got to go home and walk the dog." Yeah. And you always have to go home and walk the dog. <laughs> Well, you know, we're getting close to the end here. we got about three minutes, but I, I can't go without mentioning Charlie. Oh, who, wonderful old Charlie, Who yeah. was maybe the smartest cat I ever owned. Yeah. And what he would do, this, uh, this was, I think, after you left. We, I would sit there watching, I was in the bed, watching television, right? And Charlie mm -hmm. would come along, sit next to me, put his paw around my shoulder uh. and, and watch television with me. <laughs> Two guys just hanging back watching television. Just cooling out, <laughs> you know, watching TV, you know. And then the, the other story that I have is that, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, um, Yuntov was very, very, she was... I don't know. She always liked to get in the way of my life. And I'd be, had to have a woman over for, you know, and I'm wooing her and she's in bed with me and I'm sitting in bed and we're talking, right? Mm. Yontif would come and sit right between us and look at, and look at me <laughs> with a look on her face like, don't you dare. <laughs> I mean, she was a cock blocker like no other. <laughs> So here, here's what we shared in our marriage, folks. This was the biggest part of our marriage were the cats we shared. Uh, I know? want to tell you just one thing before we go um, that I used in my post that I that is up right now about Ollie dying. Uh, many, many, many years ago when we were married and we were visiting your folks, um, your dad told me a story that on weekends, on Saturdays and Sundays, you know, the, their house was built on a hill so that the bedrooms, on reverse of most houses, the bedrooms were downstairs, the living areas were upstairs. Right. And and so I was just chatting with him. I don't know where you or your mother were, were but um, 
uh, he was telling me that on Saturdays, you know, he would have to practice a violin in the morning and she was doing whatever she was doing and they would do their things all day long and they might not see each other, your dad is saying this, from breakfast until dinner time. He said, but you knew there was another heartbeat in the house. I've never forgotten that. Yep. And that's how I feel. I feel now about missing Ollie, that that heartbeat is gone, you know. Yeah. And it was always here, no matter yeah. he was off. You know, he had a million sleeping places. that God knows where he was. He would come out when he felt like it. Yeah. But I always knew there was another heartbeat it, in the there house. There was another warm-blooded thing in the house with you. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and now that you mention my father, I, I miss him almost as much as I miss Shabbos. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. your dad I, was a great guy. He was a great guy. Just a great Who guy. died way too young. Hey, listen, we've run out of time. And we okay. all we did today was talk about cats. <laughs> and, 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 and it's interesting that when we want to say, well, what do you and Ronnie really have in common? I mean, it's been years since you've been divorced and whatever. And all of a sudden, I realized that what we had in common the most were these cats. And, and the well, cat there was stores. a long time where we didn't talk about anything except cats and the show. Period. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a, it, yeah. It, this is a great relationship we have. That one, not so much. No, exactly. Not so much. Exactly. Hey, thanks. Love talking to you, sweetheart. Let's do it in a couple of weeks, okay? All right. Have a good day. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie Bennett.